Suppose someone comes up to you and says that Minneapolis is west of Chicago, and someone else comes up to you and says that Lord is a better artist than Billie Eilish. What's the difference between those two claims? Well, here are two ways that you might think that there's a difference between those sorts of claims. In the first case, you might think that there's a difference of value. If someone comes up and says that Lord is a better artist than Billie Eilish, what they're saying is that Lord is more valuable in a certain sense than Billie Eilish, but there's nothing more or less valuable about being west of Chicago. Another way that you might think that there's a difference between these sorts of claims is to say that one of them deals with a fact. I can look up whether or not Minneapolis is west of Chicago on a map, and the other has to do with a belief. If I say that Lord is a better artist than Billie Eilish, then what I'm saying is that I believe, it is my feeling, that Lord is a better artist than Billie Eilish. When we say something is a value or something is a belief, what we might mean, what some people do think we mean, is to say that it's only a belief, or it's the kind of claim that can't be true or false because it's a belief. For example, if I say that I really enjoy hamburgers, I think hamburgers are delicious, that might not actually be a fact about the world. That just might tell you something about my own personal beliefs and how I feel about the deliciousness of hamburgers. Now, it turns out that whether or not something that is a value or something that is a belief is a fact has some really important implications for ethics. For example, if I make a moral claim like murder is wrong, I'm saying something about what I believe. I genuinely think it's the case that murder is wrong, but I'm also saying something about the value of murder. I think it's bad. Now, if I take this idea seriously that my moral beliefs are just that, they're only beliefs and they can't be facts, they can't be true or false, that has some really important implications. For example, it means that I can believe that murder is wrong, but there is no fact of the matter about whether murder is wrong. And it turns out there are actually some philosophers who think that this is the case. For example, the Scottish philosopher David Hume believed that there was a difference between facts that we could go out in the world and verify, like what color my shirt is or what day of the week it is, and beliefs that we hold in our head that aren't verifiable. They're just things that are sort of there and can't be true or false. But I want to suggest that that idea isn't actually right, or at the very least, it's not obviously right, and it's an idea that we need to spend some time thinking about. And to see why, I want you to think about any claim that you think you know. It doesn't have to be a moral claim. For example, the day of the week. Suppose that you're watching this and it's Wednesday, and you say to yourself, aha, I know that it's Wednesday. I can look at the calendar, and I see it right there. And now suppose someone comes up to you and says, what day of the week is it? And you reply, Wednesday, and they say, do you believe that it's Wednesday? It would be a very weird thing to say, I know that it's Wednesday, but I don't believe that it's Wednesday. But if that's right, then at least some of our beliefs, and maybe even many of our beliefs, aren't mere beliefs. They're also true statements about the world. And that might also include our ethical beliefs. My belief that murder is wrong might not just be something that I hold deep down in my heart and can't be you know, proven to be a fact about the world. It might be a fact about the world. The question that we have to ask ourselves is, what would make it true? What would make it a fact about the world? And that's a really interesting question that we're going to have to consider another time.